Okay, so we have come to the end of our journey for this semester. And this will be the last time I will subject you to looking at my ugly mug <laughs> and listening to my rants for the semester. So budgeting this week. Um, and first, let me apologize for that document. I really need to get a better uh, version of that document. But uh, for what we want to accomplish this week, it gives you enough information uh, at a 10,000 foot level to discuss budgeting, essential functions, types of budgets, and their purpose, creating an operating budget, which is a master tool for managing budgets across the organization, uh, creating a cash budget, and you can go back to our financial uh, uh, component in the, first, in the second week and then uh, see the relationship between a cash flow statement and a cash budget and an income statement or P&L and, an, uh, and creating an operating budget. And then applying sensitivity analysis to budgets. So sensitivity analysis to budgets, especially in the nonprofit area, um, you can hear sometimes uh, this term or this concept being considered. Can a budget be a moral document? And so when you read the component of uh, sensitive, applying sensitivity analysis to the budget, think about that a little bit. Uh, in the nonprofit sector, can budgets be a moral document? Okay, so just specifically around budgeting, uh, wanted to talk about budgets re relative to nonprofit organizations. Uh, we don't have the time or the capacity to talk about budgets relevant to hospital systems, although we talk a lot, a lot of what we discussed this semester was relevant to hospitals and so forth. But uh, in preparing just a nonprofit budget, there are a couple of things that we want to, a uh, few things we want to uh, discuss. The budget generally is broken into two components. You have to identify your personal cost, and then you also have to figure out what your non-personal costs. So in your personal cost, that's everybody who you're going to pay a salary to um, in the budget. And every and the one thing about these types of budgets, nonprofit or even government budgets, they are all what we call line items. So when you look at different types of budgets and you think about the zero budget, uh, 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 zero budget uh, budgeting uh, tool, uh, you see everything is really a line item in the budget. Uh, so. They, you know, this this uh, presents some challenges when if you are an entrepreneur and you want to deal with nonprofit organizations and sell to them, uh, they have an annual budgeting cycle, and if a line item is not in the budget, it's very difficult for them to get it into the budget after the budget is passed for the, for the year. But overall, the, uh, these types of budgets are broken, as I said, into personal and non-personal costs. There are two things that you want to uh, uh, figure out there. In the, in the personal area, uh, if you look at the Word document that I attach, uh, there's a component that calls fringe benefits, okay? So what fringe benefits are is the grantor will pay you some contribution to uh, those amounts that contribute to the person's uh, pension or benefits overall um, uh, from the organization. So to calculate the fringe benefits, you will agree with the grantor that it's some percentage of the salary that is assigned to each line item uh, of personal uh, cost in the budget. So if you look at that Word document, you'll see that component in there, and it's just a percentage. So if you have five lines of personnel cost, you add up the total cost, and then you assign the percentage cost uh, of that total and you add that to the overall total to come up with your personal budget. The second part of that budget then is the non-personal costs. And the additional component that you would add to it is what we call indirect cost. Again, that will be a percentage of the total cost of all the indirect items. And indirect items are all of the uh, tangible things, office supplies, if you uh, are gonna engage with consultants, uh, travel, all those components that are line items in the budget, add up all the line items, and then you add some some agreed upon percentage for indirect costs. You take that percentage of the total um, uh, uh, non-personal costs, and then you add that uh, back into that, so you get your total indirect costs. So those are two big components in preparing the budget. 
uh, line items in the budget, you will notice, it, notice also there's a concept that is called justification. Every line item in the bu budget has to be justified. Why do you need this non-personnel cost? Why do you need this personnel? What are they going to be doing, you know, for uh, for the project? Okay. So those are, are, are two things. Writing good justifications is also an uh, important role because then that helps you get your budget approved uh, from the grantor. Okay. Um, and then uh, I want to talk a little bit about the two documents, the, the Excel spreadsheet and the, and the Word document. So this Excel spreadsheet is a nice little doc, a nice little tool that somebody pulled up. I pulled it off um, a sample from someplace. You can actually enter information into this Excel spreadsheet and do what if scenarios to see how the budget uh, functions. You know, so I'll, I'll I'll encourage you to you know download it and 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 do some um, some scenarios about filling out a budget uh, and uh, and see what the what happens when you change the numbers. And you know, prepare that budget to be approved by your um, your supervisors or by the finance committee. Um, the Word document also is just another version of how uh, these kinds of documents are put together. And you'll see that you know there's the the fringe benefits and the indirect costs um, assigned to the budget. So those are important components to um, to know when you put together the budget. And lastly, let me just say something about uh, line item budgets, okay? So most of the time, the grantor is going to say, you want the grant for $100,000, okay? Prepare a budget to spend $100,000. So this is somewhat what zero-based budgeting, also, although the document says you start from the bottom and with zero-based budgeting, it seems like you never take the year-over-year uh, function uh, um, of the budget last year and say, okay, what did I spend? Technically, you don't. It's like starting all over, but you do take take what you did last year for the grant and then kind of plug the numbers back in. Um, but you, what the way that line item zero based budgeting works is like I have a hundred thousand dollars and I assign a, a, a cost to each one of the line items in the budget until I get to zero. And that's how you know you spend, you allocate it for all the money that the grantor gives you. And then now during the year, you just have to figure out, you know, some cadence or, or some burn rate uh, on a monthly basis of how you spend all of that money. So when you get to the 11th month of the budget, you're not looking like you have, you haven't spent down the budget and now you have to ask the grantor for a carryover for next year because you didn't spend all the money because that, that opens up a whole uh, other set of negotiations with a grantor. But, you know, those are some of the things that would, would happen. Okay, so um, just simple um, with this document and budgeting. Again, um, you know, the way we will work the class um, uh, this week, since we, you, you've done your final uh, case study paper, I'm going to grade those. Uh, this week so we can have final grades by um, the end of the week um, uh, uh, So for the discussion uh, forum this week um, read, the, read the materials and ask me any question that you want on budgeting. I'll open up the forum uh, later this evening um, I don't really have any questions or you know to pose to you know set the, in the discussion forum. Um, I thought that last week's forum was just excellent, you know, uh, by you know posing uh, posing the, the the thread and say you tell us share share with each one of your colleagues what you thought about change management and risk management. Um, and and then and, and under use of business plans versus uh, strategic planning, that was a fascinating discussion uh, that we had last week. And as I mentioned in in some of the, the uh, some of y'all's posts that I responded to, I was in, in reading some of them. You know, you you all gave me goosebumps because of really looking at the intellectual journey of how you really incorporated pretty much a lot of the concepts that we talked about the entire semester in, in a nice summation of thinking about how 
uh, these things, um, change management and business plans and strategic plans, the relationships between them. Okay, so that was good. Um, and finally, I know I'm going a little too long here, but this, since this is our last time for us, um, I also want to say I learned a lot from you all um, this semester, and you gave me really good ideas about how to improve this class online. You know, it's so different teaching it in class in the spring, and I really appreciate all of your input and your, your comments about how to improve delivering this uh, material online. Uh, this semester. So hopefully everybody will have a great holiday and be ready to start the new year in a big way. Okay, thank you so much. Enjoy the class. Email me, text me if you have any questions or so forth and good luck with all your future endeavors.